Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, if you open up Luminar Neo and go to the edit panel and just take a glance at the right hand side, you'll notice that Luminar Neo has a lot of different tools. This could be a bit intimidating. It also could be a little confusing because the functionality of some of these tools overlap with one another. So you may not know when to use one tool over another tool. This is very true when it comes to sharpening, because in Luminar Neo, you could sharpen with Structure AI, but you also could sharpen with Details. When should you use one over the other, or maybe you should use them both? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you what each of these tools do and how you should use them. Very quickly, I do want to mention that Skylum Software gave me a special discount code that will save you 30%. I'll have that listed in the description below this video. It is good until the end of March, so don't sit on it. Now, we're going to start out with this image. This image is just a simple edit. I went to develop raw, and all I did was move two sliders, highlights and shadows. That's all I did. You'll also notice that develop raw also has a sharpness section. I want to say I, I almost never use that. Um, I just will bypass that totally and instead use uh, Structure AI and or Details. Now, I'm a firm believer that you should do things in a very structured way as far as post-production is concerned. That will give you consistent results. If you do things different all the time, you're going to get various you know, degrees of success. So I believe you should do things in a consistent way. Now, as far as what these tools do, I mentioned they sharpen in a way. They kind of enhance texture. Let's start with Structure AI. You'll notice there's just two sliders here, Amount and Boost. And obviously, if you go to the Amount slider, move it to the left, you're going to make everything softer and give your image more of an ethereal look. I like to use this on night images when I have like pointed light sources in the background. I like to kind of soften those up sometimes. So I'll move this to the left. But more often, I'm moving this to the right. And when I move it to the right, you can see how it's enhancing the detail everywhere. Um, this is akin to, if you're familiar with Lightroom Classic or any version of Lightroom, really, of the um, Clarity Slider. The Clarity Slider does something very similar. Uh, they often say that this affects mid-tone contrast. And you can see that it affects pretty much everything equally. It's affecting the sculpture as much as it is the sky, as much as it is the grass. Now, with the Boost Slider, this will boost the structure being applied to the smallest details. So if I move this to the right, you'll notice that it's affecting the grass a little more than it is maybe the sky. And it's affecting the sculpture because the sculpture has a certain texture to it. So you can see how it's affecting that. It's maybe affecting the kind of the wispy edges of the clouds a little more too. But that's what boost will do. So generally speaking, when you're using Structure AI, if you want to add that kind of mid-tone, crunchy pop, move this to the right. And if you want to get a little more like texture out of the smaller details, move Boost to the right, and then that's what that will do. So let's reset this. Also, you don't have to do this, but I go to Edits, and it's going to be sitting here in Edits even though it's reset, and I just get rid of it. You don't have to. It doesn't hurt anything to leave it there. I'm just anal about it. Now, as far as detail is concerned, this is a little more uh, like thorough or a little more complex. Let me move this up more. You see there's a number of different sliders here, and there's actually three different sections. You have the adjustments area, and you have four sliders here. And you have details masking and sharpening masking. Now, let's talk about the sliders. Uh, small details, medium details, large details. Those are exactly what they mean. If I go and I move small details to the right, it will increase the detail sharpening of the smallest like areas, the smallest textures. So the, the uh, sculpture, the grass, the really wispy edges of the clouds, that's getting all of the sharpening done to it. Medium details does the medium. So it's getting still the grass and the sculpture. It's not affecting the clouds quite as much, but it's getting everything else pretty much equally. Then if I go to large details, you'll notice that that's affecting the least amount of everything, but it's still affecting the grass and the sculpture, and it's affecting the clouds, but not quite as much as the other two sliders did. And then sharp, sharpen is a sharpening slider, so it's going to take the finest details and affect the finest details. Now, usually 
I like to work these sliders from the bottom up, excluding sharpen, since that's the finest. So if you think of this as the large details being the largest part, the medium details being next, small next, and then sharpen last, that's the order I do them in. I just seem to not get as good of an edit if I go to small details first, then medium details, then large details. I just, for me, it works better doing it from bottom up and then doing sharpen last if I have to do sharpen at all. Now, as far as those other two sections, let me just crank these like ridiculously high. Okay, now if we go to details masking, you notice there's a, a slider for details protection. I want you to look at the grass. As I move this to the right, you'll notice it's kind of taking some of that over sharpening away from the grass. You can also look at the clouds, like the really fine like wisps of clouds that I over sharpened. You can see how it kind of pulls some of that sharpening away. So you'd want to use details protection if you moved your sliders and everything looks pretty good except maybe the smallest details look to be a little bit over sharpened. Take details protection to the right. Now details masking goes left or right. If you notice if I move that to the right it's taking the sharpening totally away from the smallest details. So from the sculpture, from the um, from the grass. It's even taken it away from the clouds. So it's taking details away pretty much everywhere. If I move it to left, it's allowing the detail sharpening to go everywhere. So that's that. Now, let's uh, reset this. And let me go to edits and get rid of it because, again, I'm mean all about that. And let's talk about how I go about sharpening an image such as this. When I'm ready to sharpen, which would be towards the end of my workflow, is I would go to structure first. And I rarely would mask structure. So I'll use structure to affect the entire image. And I usually will take the amount slider to the right. And I'll just move it to the right till it looks like it's like too much and then back it off. You know, so that's it. That's my entire structure adjustment. I rarely would move boost. I don't need to usually do anything with the finer details because I take care of that with the details tool. So I don't need to use the boost slider to do that. So I'm done with structure AI on this image. Next thing I would do is I would go to details. Then again, I move the three sliders, the three detail sliders from bottom up. I'll start with large. I'll move it to the right until it looks about right. Then I'll see what medium does. Move it to the right. And then I move small details to the right as well. And I rarely do anything with details masking as far as protection or this details masking slider. I rarely will do that. Also, usually after I move these three sliders and the one slider in Structure AI, I'm done. I don't really need to do any sharpening with this slider. Now, as far as this slider is concerned, if you do find that you want to add some sharpening, it's going to affect the smallest details and the smallest textures in an image. What you could do then is you could enhance it or modify it with the sharpening masking section. You could affect the radius here and the actual masking of it. And you'll see the masking doesn't do much. It pulls it away from certain areas, but it doesn't do a lot. So again, I don't do much with the actual sharpen slider. I usually find that I get my image sharp enough just using Structure AI and these three sliders and details. As a matter of fact, looking at this image, you could tell it's over sharpened. I just, for this demonstration, over sharpened it. Also, I should add that if you're editing for a long time, your, your eyes will get fatigued and your brain gets lazy and you'll start to over sharpen things because it just doesn't look sharp enough to you. So what I strongly suggest is that after you do sharpen is that you step away from your computer for a while and maybe 15 minutes to half hour, maybe even an hour, and let everything reset, then come back and look at it. And I guarantee that nine times out of 10, you're going to look at it and say, wow, it's over sharpened. I need to lessen it a little bit. So that's what I would do on this image. Now, what I probably more often do, though, is I'll use masking with details. And let's go to a different image for that. So I have this image here. And like the other image, if I go to um, edits, I move two sliders. 
in develop raw. And that was it. Uh, so I haven't done any cropping. I haven't done anything outside of those two sliders. So if I go then here, and let's say I'm ready to do my actual sharpening for the image. Again, I would go to structure AI first. I would move this amount slider to the right. Again, I want it to affect everything. That looks pretty good right there. Then I would go to details. Push this up. I want it to affect only the sculpture. So I'm going to go to masking. And then I'm going to use the object mask. I'm going to click on the sculpture. You can see I got the red overlay on the sculpture. Then I'm going to go to adjustments. I'm going to work the detail sliders from the bottom up. Some of this large detail to the right. Medium detail to the right. Small detail to the right. And that's like pretty sharp. I mean, right there. Like here's before, and there's after. I, again, probably almost never do this, but you could do that if you wanted to. Now, there are some instances, though, where I won't use structure AI at all, but I'll use it first still to see if I'm going to use it. For example, I have this image of the gorilla. Um, again, if I go to edits, here... I did do noiseless raw on it. I applied that and I again moved two sliders and that was it. That's all I've done to this image. There's been no cropping, nothing. So it's pretty much straight out of camera with noise removed. Now, I'll go to structure AI first and I'll move it to the right. And as I move it to the right, you'll notice it's affecting like stuff, but I don't like what it's doing. I just don't like what it's doing. See, the background is just making it too chunky looking. I don't like what it's doing to the, the, I don't know what, what, if that's hay or what it is that the grill is eating, but it just doesn't look right. And I don't like what it's doing to the gorilla's fur at all. So I just won't use this at all. And then I'll go, uh, then because I'm anal, I'll go here and get rid of it. Then I'll go to, to uh, details. And I'm going to, let's close that down. I'm going to mask. I'm going to mask with an object. And I'm going to mask our uh, gorilla. And let's just say that's good enough. It's missing a little bit down here, but let's just say that's good enough. We'll go to adjustments. I'll again go from the bottom up, large detail. So it's affecting the gorilla. It's not affecting the hay. Because I want this hay blurry. I don't want it sharpened. I want the background blurry. And then I'll go to medium details. And then I'll go to small details. Now, sometimes on wildlife, those would be sometimes um, the rare times I may move sharpen, and it's more often with birds on feathers, but not so much with um, like gorillas and fur. But but just to let you know, that's when I might use sharpen on some plumage. But here I don't need to. So here's before, and there's after. Before, after. So the main gist of what I'm trying to communicate here is that you should do things in a very specific order. You don't have to do it my way, but if you do it in a specific order every time, you'll get consistent results. The way I like to do it is I like to use Structure AI first, and I most often will use that on the entire image. Then I'll go to um, Details, and Details, I more often, although I didn't do it on the first image, I more often with Details will apply that to a specific element in the scene. It could be like the sculpture here, or it could be this sculpture, which I didn't do, but I didn't do in this video. But in real life, I probably would have just used details on the sculpture all by itself or on the um, gorilla. And that's the way I go about doing it. And you got to be careful about over sharpening. It's kind of one of the um, first things people notice about newer photographers is they tend to over sharpen their images. And you could help um not do that or you could make sure you don't do that by giving your eyes a rest and then coming back and looking at the image and you'll look and you go oh wow it's really over sharpened i better back things off and that's it and just want to remind you in the description below this video will be that discount code and a link to skylum's website um until the end of the month you could save 30 percent. that is a, cons a significant savings thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon